it seems like I'm starting in the middle of a project for this video. Unfortunately, I lost a lot of content recently on my other GoPro, my Hero 7. Today we're filming with the new 12 creator content package or whatever. I'll put a link down below. But uh, what I'm working on, I've got the engine out of this 1924 Model T. And if you're not familiar with us, this is the Model T that I drove across country in November of 2023. And I uh, did it in 12 days, solo driver, had the crazy crew following me, which consisted of my wife Jennifer, friend Jasmine, other friends Patrick and Philip. Charlie was here taking care of the home front for us, and uh, we did that in 12 days. So we still have the engine transmission, rear, everything in here. Um, this is the rear end out of it. Went all the way up across country, coast to coast. The Flaming Island State Park, South Carolina, made it all the way to Huntington Beach, California. Drove down the strip in Vegas. Drove it up in North Carolina. Left at the museum for five, five and a half months in Georgia. Miles to time. Y'all need to check that place out too. He's got a cool YouTube channel as well. Try to put a link down below for that. And uh, got it back. Drove it to work twice. And the uh, thing about made me jump out of the seat. The cap on the rear end here. The bottom one fell out 3,000 miles and it decided to fall out, but at least we we're at home. So anyway, um, it sheared off the pin for the U-joint. Let me get that. It sheared off the pin when it fell through. You can see a little bit of damage on the threads. And uh, so today I've got this cleaned up and we're just going to take this and not strip it down or anything like that. We're going to pull the Rocky Mountain brakes off of it, clean everything up, wipe it down, try to drain the grease out of it because we ended up with a lot of engine oil in there. It was just pouring out. I did a short video on that. I'll try to put a little B-roll on here. But um, we're going to try to clean this up, get the new U-joint in, and um, see if we can ping this over. Not something I've done a whole lot of, but the worst I can do is mess it up. It's 45 cent piece. I guess the actual worst I could do was really mess it up and not be able to get it back out. Let's give it a shot. All right, so I got my light here. This is a handy little deal, easily rechargeable. And again, so let me really figure out which direction I want to go with this. I hate calling a favor for something, but I might do what I have to do. lining up perfectly. Let's see if I can get y'all in there. The drive shaft seems to be a little bit further back than the U-joint is. So, how do I fall that? Yeah, it moved it forward. It's also about 12,000 degrees in here. It's exaggerating, but it is a hot day in South Carolina, y'all. Hot, hot day. My wife is in there singing away. Probably because I'm not inside. Some of y'all are probably looking at me. You big dummy, there's a much easier way to do it, do with this. But. That wouldn't be entertaining, would it? Man, it is hot here. So the trick is, if anybody that's not familiar with this, this pin goes through, hooks the U-joint, to the drive shaft that goes down in here to the pinion and yoke, not the yoke, to the pinion and uh, ring gear. So my thought process is stick this bolt on the bottom and it pushes it back up just enough to where the jack can work. Once 
Don't you love watching a guy struggle? All right, we got that in there. You see the pin sticking up right here? We found something. Yeah, Lee. Yep. Hi, baby. I just deleted a whole scene. I know you can't hear me. I had to turn the, the fan on here. It is some kind of hot. Randall with Shell by the Tracks talks about how cold it gets up there. Man, it is hot and humid here today. But let me tell you why I deleted that scene. Before I came out here, I told my wife, she fixed breakfast this morning, Saturday morning. And uh, so I'm going out here to film some video, get a little content for the channel. Made a big deal about it, we joked. I said, quiet on the set. Act like a little sign was up there above the door, said on air. She came out here wanting coffee. Thought about it. I cussed a little bit under my breath and I definitely should not have done that. I'm not one to give advice for relationships by no means whatsoever. But if you're out here doing stuff like this and your wife just asked for a simple cup of coffee, stop what you're doing and go get her some coffee. You don't have to thank me, but you're welcome. <laughs> Let's see what we can get done on this. I found some punches and stuff. I, uh, I hope y'all can hear me at least a little bit. Like I said, this is an old floor mover I had, floor blower. And um, let's see what we can screw up. I know there's some of y'all out here watching this just shaking your head big time. The guess is some of y'all don't know what you were doing either the first time. I don't have anyone to show me right now. And I'm doing this video because there's not a whole lot on YouTube, so if it works out good. Hopefully it's going to help somebody out, someone out in the future. Maybe I can take some English lessons. I'll make some money off this video. This appears to be working a little bit. Can you see that? This is also a three to one ratio rear end uh, that we used on the coast to coast for a hydrocephalus trip. I think we have a 260 or 270 lift cam, regrind, scat crankshaft, stock head, 60 over pistons, 26, 27 transmission, and the Rocky Mountain Brace. Man, this thing was great. Dave Stoller built us these wheels, man. Look at those things. You probably won't see anything prettier than that today. Let's just see my wife. So I'm gonna try to drive this back to where it should be, see if it goes. Yeah, it didn't go all the way through, so. Worst thing is we pull the rear end back out when it breaks again. I finally boogered it up enough, I don't think it's gonna come out whether I wanna get it out or on its own. If I mention how hot it is, and I'm old. All right, clean up as good as it's gonna get. I think I mentioned before we got some engine oil down into the differential, so I'm gonna drain that out. I'm gonna prop it back up on my bungee cords and let it just drip for a day or so. Didn't have a oil pan. My wife had these cat litter containers, jugs. If I cut myself, I'll bleep that part out. That's happened before. All you gotta do is go back and watch last year's Facebook memories, reels, broke bone, right here. Did I get stitches? Charlie Bosley got stitches. This thing is fault. Patrick got a uh, face full of word in the other day. Still got a little oil dry in there. I don't know how much is still in here. I drained a lot out. These rear end caps are real thin. Be easy to strip it off, round it. Did y'all leave comments already? 
I'm a rookie, man. Nothing. Tell me what you see. I'll track that in the house later. So uh, I'll let that drain maybe till next week. Who knows? It's thick stuff, but we'll be back. All right, a week later, and we're finally back on things. The back of the Model T has pretty much became a catch all. We're still trying to do some see crap everywhere. The only thing we're going to do today is try to get this one shackle installed. Uh, I already have one installed, the second one's always harder. But today I have some special help or at least someone hanging out. She said if I took her to the house of waffles, she'd come out here and help me. And that's exactly what she's doing. She's helping. She's helping. Moral support. All right, let's get started. She's going to help some more. All right, so the hard part, one shackle's already in, is getting this one to line up. And obviously it's too far away, the spring is from the perch. So... What I did last time was I cut a two by four here and it put tension on the spring and brought it over toward the shackle. Almost. Right. Hold on. Yes. So close. Stay there, man. Stay All right. One more. All right, hold what you got. I'm going to put a little grease on it. Alright, so I put a little bit of grease on it because you never want to put anything in dry. Y'all get quiet. Right. I'm trying to try not to. Move. Yeah, just don't move. Try to put all the weight on it. Try not to put all the weight on it. It's weird. Say that again. I'm trying to put all my weight on it, but like not put all my weight on it, and put my book to show it's spread. We'll uh, let Jack down, Jim. All the way? Yep. Is that good? Yeah, now pull that block out over there. We'll save that for the next time. Uh, no. <laughs> so I don't know why the other block didn't work. Um, I did try it on that side before, you can get out well. but I would imagine the same amount of tensions on both sides. But 
I guess it's the angle of the dangle. So. What in the hell? That was all we had planned for the day. So uh, next thing up will be cleaning the Rocky Mountain brakes here, reinstalling those. Uh, we'll go back and tighten everything up. We'll do that tomorrow. No, it's not working for me. It's not tightening. You gotta hold the ratchet. I just did. Ratchet just while you're did. pulling it back towards you. Now, yeah. Hold it. Loosen. My finger doesn't get in there. You gotta hold it. No, you're gonna hold it. You got it. You know how to hold it. <laughs> Stop. So obviously we decided to work a few more minutes. I didn't want to leave these loose and end up losing them. Plus I had some good help. That's good. I gotta put the cotter pins through it. So go ahead and do the other one. Okay. Is it worth going to the house of waffles for this? Always worth the house of waffles. You treat me so well. All right, several more days have gone by, and uh, it's it's just been hot, hot. It's like uh, 6:30, 6:45 in the afternoon, and it's still 87 or 88 degrees. Hot. Anyway, working on the Rocky Mountain brakes today. I had a few extra minutes. And I wanted to kind of show you um, how they work. So this is the uh, Rocky Mountain brake kit, I guess you could say. And uh, more or less what happens is it gets bolted on. You have to grind these two out, these two rivets here. And these come through here and on the back side here, this is going to get bolted on the outside here. But anyway, what happens is when you pull that mash down the brake pedal that rod moves it pulls this lever and i hope you can see it here and it's just like a regular brake shoe so we're going to try to get these bolted back in today you see how i did that bottom side down under and over So the lever goes through here, that rod. Forgot my flashlight. Man, I can't believe I forgot my flashlight. Did you ever hold a flashlight for your dad or someone while they were working? You can learn some words about them. Man. All right, I gotta get my light. I'm gonna go ahead and stick these bolts in here. Hopefully you can see those. I wish someone would do a video from start to finish on installing Rocky Mountain brakes. It's, it's a really good concept, especially for back then. I'm just putting a washer and nut this gets double nutted. We'll double nut it after we go back and put the cotter pins in. 
I don't want to bore you too much with that. Y'all have already put up with plenty enough. I'm probably doing something wrong. Can't wait to take you off for a test ride. A danger ride, as we call it. What's the temperature where y'all are? We're in South Carolina. Again, I told y'all how hot it's been. Cannot wait for the fall. This is what it sounds like for a fat boy being out of shape. Husky boy, as I said in some other videos. Who else has Rocky Mountain brakes? Or has had them in the past? Do you like the disc brakes or which ones do you like? What's the other one? AC brakes? I've never never used those. Never ridden anything with those. If you have one of you in my area, I'd love to, to know more about them and see them. That would be spectacular. So, what's next? Spring comes back around here, hooks back, keeps a little tension on it, and again, see how this works. You can make your adjustment here, bring it in a little faster. Uh, we had to do that a couple of times whenever we went to um, Carlsbad Caverns. So. So I'm putting these uh, pins back through the emergency brake and everything and I'm going to tidy this up and then I'm going to go inside and eat. I've got to do the other side. It's basically the same thing and uh, there's so much clutter over there right now. Uh, I'm not going to show you that side but basically the same thing as this. It's probably been a couple of weeks since I actually worked on this thing but uh, I got out here today and I did some amazing stuff. I put cotter pins in. I didn't figure I would bore y'all with that. Let me just show you with the Rocky Mountain brakes. Hope you can see in this area. All right, so I've gone through everything. I checked the oil. I'll show you all that video later. Probably seen it. You know how to check the oil. Check the water. I am gonna change the oil because the oil is actually still in there from Arizona or something like that from when we did the coast to coast trip. Uh, put the floorboards back in, put the pins on the axle, Rocky Mountain brakes. Let's see if it'll even fire up. I don't have the rod for this one. And it's cold. Again, this was upgraded to 12 volts, so it sounds a little different than most model keys, but and no magneto. Timer up. No way. engine ran. Um, 
we had to clean the timer out. I think I've mentioned that before. We do have an e-timer in this. And uh, number one plug fouled out some, no big deal. I think I mentioned before, we changed the intake in Arizona as well. Uh, changed from the aluminum to the cast iron. We ended up having one warp on us, no big deal there. All right, next thing is I'm gonna take y'all for a ride. couple of months in the old coast to coast for hydro supplement model T. I found a little bit of grinding and a little bit of stuff going on under my feet. But uh I'm not sure if we just need to get some grease going around in there so we'll see. I hate to think that we have a cracked drum but there is that possibility. I'd have to also see if it feels like it's really good down on power. some deeper issues and just the pin that broke um, obviously that's fixed but um, we got something else going on I don't know if it's the triple gears or a drum or what but anyway thanks for tuning in make sure you leave us a comment what you think it might be if you could hear anything on the test drive and um, I guess we're gonna have a lot of content to make now Oh, got a fingernail full of splinter.